Hey everyone, Doug here. I've got something kind of special for you here today. I've got some code that I'm posting on my website and you can download. Uh, if you happen to be running Just Macros, Just Macros software, uh, be using and it, are using a Blackmagic switcher that has the super source feature, then I've got some code here that allows you to take better control over that super source feature of the switcher and let you do some kind of cool things like some of the things you see on broadcast television that uh, you can't normally do with sort of the default setup. So, um, let me just actually show you what this looks like and then I'll talk about how I did it and share the code with you and talk a little bit about that. So I'm going to go over here to a super source view. So this is just a super source of the camera that's here in front of me and a camera that's looking down on my laptop. Now, um, people who are familiar with the Blackmagic Switcher knows this is kind of a standard configuration of the super source feature in the Switcher, uh, but there's more we can do here. So. What I've done is I've programmed a couple buttons on my X keys controller uh, to run some Lua macros in just macros. And what, the, what it does is allows me to do different presets for, for super source layouts. And so let me just actually show you what that looks like. So here we go. So it just went from a two up, two video source configuration to, th to three. And you know, as, as you no probably noticed that it also animated that on as well. So uh, if I can go to another configuration here, you can see that it's, it's doing animation every time it switches layouts. And so you could actually use this and switch between layouts uh, in your program feed. You don't have to switch switch your super source out to preview, make the change, and then switch it back. You can actually do this live. Uh, and so yeah, I, I've, I've pre-programmed nine different uh, templates here. And those will be included in, in the code that I'm going to be sharing with you. Uh, but you can modify it as needed. So I'll, I'll show you towards the end of this video how to make changes in that code so that you can actually make your own, make your own layouts and do some kind of cool things there. So, um, so that's kind of the gist of it. Now, um, let me switch to my overhead view here and show you just a little bit of what I've done on, the switcher, uh, on my switcher control panel. So this is, uh, it's going to be upside down for you guys. I apologize for that. But it's going to be, this is the X keys, XK128 or XK8, XKE128. And I've got four buttons here that I've programmed to allow me to assign sources to the different super source boxes. So uh, what I have to do is I, I, I'll put something on preview. Let me skew that up just a bit. So I'll choose something on preview. And then I'll press one of those buttons to assign that particular source to one of the four super source uh, boxes that's available. So that way I, I can very quickly uh, set up and choose which sources are going to be shown on screen. Uh, let me show you just kind of an example of what that looks like. So so if I go to, to super source and if I want to change that, that second box there, what I can do on my switcher is I select source 3 which is my computer and then uh, on that row of buttons I just showed you if I press source 2 and now switches source two, and you can do that live. So, if if you're doing something that's kind of news style, and you needed to switch between uh, different talking heads on the, on the screen at once, preview, and then hit one of those buttons, and then it'll uh, automatically switch to that source, switch that source in that particular box without interrupting anything else. Um, so, I'll switch it back here. So, source two, and then uh, source two, the preview to super uh, super source box two. So, uh, pretty useful stuff there. Um, now, I'm going to show you guys. There we go. I'm gonna show you guys what you see in preview window because the preview is actually handled a little bit differently in the program. And I made that so you can get through these quickly. So if you look over my shoulder here, I've got Super Source up in the, in the preview. And as I press another button, I've got on my switcher. I call it Super Source Layout. As I press it, it goes through all those different source uh, all Super Source layouts very quickly. So I very quickly get to them. And then if I hold down shift when I press the button, it goes backwards. So if I, if I, like, that's the one I want, but I hit the button too many times. I hit shift and then the button, and it takes me back to the previous one. Now when that super source is live in program, that layout button still cycles through layouts, but it doesn't take them live because the assumption is you don't want to be messing up your, your live program feed. And so what I've done for that is I programmed another button on here, in this case, I call it macro 8. And then when I press macro 8, it then applies whatever super source layout that I've selected. That way I can go through, uh, pick the one I want, and then hit a, a, a macro 8 button in order to take it. So, so that's kind of what's going on there. Uh, another thing that I did here, it's kind of handy, is 
Now you aren't going to be able to see this very well. But I have a super source button. There it is. On my control panel. And I've programmed that to not, ju not just to set the super source as the preview source, but if I hold down shift when I press that button, it takes the current preview and makes that the background layer behind the super source. So if you have a graphic or whatever, you can actually assign that. And that uh, also can be done live. So if I show you what that looks like. So if I go to super source, and then I'm going to go to a solid color, in this case color 1, and then I'm going to hit shift and super source, and it changes the background just like that. Or if I want to go back to media player 1, which had the graphic on it, so shift and then super source, and then it assigns the background. So I'm doing that all from the control panel and not having to go into the software and use a mouse or a touchpad on a laptop in order to make that happen. So, so that's kind of the gist of it. So by using the, the programming capabilities that are built into Just Macros, I, I've really extended the ability to make the SuperStore something special and something cool. So I'm, I'm making this code available. Uh, if you want to try this out, I'm not going to charge anything for it. It's just, just uh, going to be available on my website. The website... What, uh, the URL to download that is going to be djp.li slash supersource with no space or in underscore anything. So S-U-P-E-R-S-O-U-R-C-E. -S and it'll just, it'll just download the files. And there will be uh, a readme file in there that gives you a little bit more information on how to, on how to extract that and actually make it a part of your, your Just Macros configuration. So Now, for those of you who are a little more technical in nature and maybe you want to modify some of this stuff on your own, I'll show you how to, m to add new layouts to the configuration file. So All right, so the layouts themselves are actually stored in this file. This is uh, DJ ATEM Funk. Uh, it's a Lua, Lua file. It's basically a file made just for just macros. And if we scroll down a little bit here, we'll get to this function. It's called set super source layout. And it takes one parameter, which is I call layout. And that basically that's a number between 0 and the number of layouts that you want to support minus 1. So if you had 10 different layouts, that number would be 0 through 9. And then the code down here actually is, sets that up. So uh, in this case, look at the first one, which is two windows side by side. So uh, you saw that a minute ago. Uh, two windows side by side. So what the code what the code is doing here is first of all it's setting a name so that uh, if you when you're cycling through the different available layouts and the super source is currently on program, you can actually look in the log window log console log inside of just macros and see which layout you're currently selecting. Uh, so the next thing here is we set the number of boxes and then set a variables indicating which box which of the four boxes we're actually modifying and then we'll set some properties. So the first one is, are we cropping it? Yes or no? So you, you set that to true or false. Uh, you set a parameter here for size. Uh, in this case, it's 80% of full size. Uh, X position, and these are between minus 16, plus 16, plus 8, or plus 9, minus 9, generally speaking, uh, for the left and right, top and bottom edges of the, of the screen. Um, so in this case, I am setting it on the left side of the screen and centered vertically. So, yeah, my, no, negative numbers are to the left or down, and backwards of what graphics are traditionally done. And then we can set cropping factors. So in this case, I'm cropping 7.5 off of the left, and that's the L for left, and then the R for right. I'm not set, set cropping anything off the, off the uh, top and bottom. And come down here, we're going to say we're going to configure box number two. It's cropped 80% original size. Its exposition is 7.2 to the right. That's how they're side by side. Uh, and then a little bit of a little bit of cropping on that as well. And so that's basically it. So if you want to create your own layouts, you'll just modify this code. Uh, cop you can copy one of the existing ones and just modify the numbers if you want. And you got to make sure that this layout number here, that these are all unique with inside this function. And the other thing you have to watch out for is at the very top of the screen, there's a variable called num layout, and that tells uh, the script how many layouts there are. So as you're cycling through, after it gets to the last one, it knows to cycle back back around to the first one. Uh, so if you add, if you just want to add new ones, then every time you add one, you'd want to increase that number by one. So that's kind of the gist of that there. Um, now this code right here, this is just kind of a generic function library. I stripped all the unnecessary stuff out of here, so it's basically basically the only stuff that's required. And then I come over here and this is this is actually the code for the four buttons that I showed you earlier. So uh, if I want to change the source for uh, super source box number one, I'll hit 
in front of the preview buttons and then hit the button and this is the code that actually runs uh, when you press that button. So it's basically saying grab the preview input. Uh, if, if the shift button is down, then basically we're going to turn that box on or off. If the shift button is not down, we're going to set the source for that, for that first box uh, to whatever the current preview source. So pretty really simple there. All right, and then just this last script. Uh, this is the script that runs when you press the layout button, the super source layout button on on your panel. So all this stuff can, can actually work without the X keys control panel, but it's more convenient to have it. So uh, if you didn't use it, you'd have to some find some other ways in order to trigger these macro files directly. So so anyway. Um, uh, that's 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 what it is. It's uh, nothing too incredibly fancy, but it does it, it does spice up your your productions a little bit, so that you have some motion going on. It's not just ev not everything is just static. Uh, these scripts do respect and leave intact whatever settings you have with regard to border uh, on on the different boxes. So it doesn't mess with any of that. So if you want to have boxes on there, you just go into the ATEM software, set that up, and then the scripts that I've created and provided. Don't will not mess with that. Will not change that, and so y you don't have to modify any code in order to in order to keep the border settings that you've you've set. So if you guys have any questions about this, uh, leave them down in the comment section down below. Uh, I'll try and answer as best I can. And if this is your first time joining the channel, uh, please consider subscribing. I produce content related to video production topics about once a week, and. I try to do a wide variety of topics between equipment reviews and how tos and uh, kind of let you guys peek in on what my company is doing. So, anyway, thank you guys for watching and have a fantastic day.